Namaskar everyone. My name is Dr. Rita Bhattacharya. I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Sanskrit of Guwahati University. The title of my research paper is Exploring Human and Wildlife Interaction in Vedic India, Perspectives on Conflict and Coexistence. The Vedas are a treasure home of information about the science of ancient society. They offer valuable insight into various aspects of life, including the interaction between humans and wildlife. The Vedic literature, rich in spiritual, ecological, and societal narratives, reflect the complex relationship between humans and natural world, characterized by both conflict and coexistence. Wildlife generally refers to all the undomesticated animals, plants, fungi, and other organisms that grows or lives in natural environment without human intervention. It encompasses a broad range of species, right from mammals, reptiles, fish, insects, plants, microorganisms, birds, etc. It plays a crucial role in maintaining ecological balance and biodiversity, contributing to the health of ecosystems by performing functions such as pollination, seed dispersal, pest control, and nutrient cycling. Ancient India was characterized by diverse ecosystems, ranging from dense forests and arid deserts to fertile river valley. The rich biodiversity provided various habitats for animals, which were integral to the ecological balance. The Vedic society was primarily agrarian, relying heavily on agricultural pastoralism and the symbiotic relationship with nature. In modern Sanskrit, the word Paryavarana is used to refer to the environment, meaning that which encircles us and is all around in our surroundings. In Atharva Veda, we found a couple of terms which is equivalent of the term environment. Vritta, Vritta, Parivritta, Abhivaraha, Abhritta, etc. In the 18.1.17 section of Atharva Veda, it is mentioned that uh, wise individuals utilize three elements, water, air, and plants in various ways, which are diverse and visible and full of qualities. These three elements, together known as Chandamsi, are the abode of various biotic factors. We have found various forms of artifacts from post-Vedic, that is Indus Valley civilizations among those artifacts the Pashupati seal is fascinating artifacts that offers a glimpse into the religious and cultural life of Harappan civilization. Although the central figure on the seal is, horn, is a horned deity seated in a yogic posture, yet this figure is surrounded by various animals, including a tiger, an elephant, buffalo, a rhinoceros. Below the deity, there are two deer facing each other. The seal reflects the interconnectedness of human and animal, animal realm in Harappan thought emphasizing the harmonious relationship between them. The four Vedas are replete with reverence, references to various animals indicating their importance in Vedic culture. The Rig Veda offers uh, three full divisions of animals apart from men, Baya, Bia, Aranya, and Gramya. This division into Gramya and Aranya animals is also found in Atharva Veda. Again, in Atharva Veda, wild animals are divided into five classes in a different way. Breath, beast, Winged creatures represented by Hansa, Suparna, Shakunavad, Amphibia, that is Shimshumara and Ajagara, fish, insects. Now, perspective on coexistence. The relationship between human and wildlife has always been a dynamic and complex, reflecting the balance between coexistence and conflict. During Vedic period, the interplay between human by religious, philosophical, and ecological factors. The Vedic worldview was deeply spiritual, perceiving nature as imbued with divine presence. Many deities in the Vedic pantheon were associated with natural elements and animals. Agni, Vayu, Surya were integral to natural cycle, and Indra, the king of gods, was often depicted as a protector of cattle and provider of rain. The spiritual reverence fostered a sense of respect and coexistence with wildlife. In Vedic literature, Pushana has been uh, referred as the protector of animal. The term Pashupa here metaphorically, metaphorically applies to Pusha. Now ritual practices. Rituals and sacrifices were central to Vedic religious life, is uh, often involving animals. While this may seem contradictory to modern conservation ethics, these practices were conducted with a belief in cosmic balance and reciprocity. Animals were offered to deities to seek balance for prosperity, health, and protection, reflecting an interdependent relationship with natural world. The term Madhu occurs in several places of Yajurveda. It is a kind of uh, aquatic bird which is included in the list of victims at Ashramita. Similarly, Makara, Ruru, Sharga, Sarga according to mean wild Chartaka, according to Sayanacharya. 
Mayura, etc., were also enumerated in the list of victims at Ashramida in Yajurveda Samhita. Mahanirashtra or Dhenu was offered as the Dakshina or sacrificial feast in the house of a Sutta at the Radhasoya mentioned in Yajurveda Samhita. In the Aitanya Brahmana, in the description of Punaravishek Yagya, Vyagra Charma, Charma is used as one of the Samhara, which has great symbolic representations. According to Sayana, Vyagra was considered as the hero of Kshatriya in animal kingdom. So the king who was undergone through the process of Abhisheka, his uh, valor was also compared with the prowess of a tiger. The Vedic text also hints at early conservation and practices. Certain rituals required the preservation of specific habitats and spaces and there were taboos against the unnecessary destruction of forest and wildlife. These practices indicate an understanding of sustainable resources management essential for maintaining ecological balance. Forests were not only sources of resources, but also held its spiritual significance as abode of deities and sages. The sacred forest or sacred groups, a forested area of special religious significance to a particular culture or community, are often protected by traditional beliefs and cultural practices, and they are considered to be the dwelling places of deities, spirits, and ancestors. In Rig Veda 6.47.26, we also find the idea of sacred forest, where forest lord has been prayed to protect the warriors. Now, perspective of conflict. The interaction between humans and wildlife has been a critical aspect of life throughout the history. In ancient India, this relationship was complex and multifaceted, influenced by environmental, cultural, and socioeconomic factors. Agricultural challenges. As an agrarian society, Vedic people challenges from wildlife that threatens crops and livestock. Humans in Ayurveda, for instance, include prayers to ward off the wild animals such as shalava, grasshopper, wolves, and birds that could harm agricultural output. The term shalabha here means grasshopper or locust, but according to the Vedic index of names and subject, that the same term occurs in Paipalla, the Samhita of Atharva Veda, and there it is equated with sharabha. Sharabha is a polysemous word. Apart from grasshopper and locust, it also means young elephant, camel, monkey also. This highlights the conflict dimensions where human needs for survival and prosperity sometimes clash with wildlife behavior. The Atharva Veda contains spans to prevent this abyss. In Atharva Veda, uh, shrinks are also pro uh, prayed to protect the plow field from abyss. Now, human and wildlife encounters. The presence of wild animals in forest and rural areas occasionally led to dangerous encounters. These encounters were part of natural order, necessitating strategies for managing and mitigating conflicts. In Rig Veda, there occurs the term Banarbu, which means forest goers. And the same term was also found in Atharva Veda, but the meaning of the term in Atharva Veda is robbers who haunts the forest. Although agricultural and pastoral pursuits were the mainstay of existence of Vedic people, yet hunting was also considered as a mean of livelihood during Vedic era. The term Mrigayu occurs in Atharva Veda and uh, Bajasani Samhita. Mrigayu means those people who make their livelihood by fishing or hunting. These are some uh, references which are associated with practice of hunting. In some mantras of Rig Veda, the term Varana is used as an adjective with Mriga, meaning wild beast or dangerous animal. But Sayanacharya has taken the meaning of the term as elephant. In Rig Veda 8.33.8, .8, the elephant is described as a dangerous animal. Here, according to Sayanacharya, Mrigo means Shatrunam Anvishaka and Dana means Mada Jalaniva. So it can be said that an intoxicated elephant was used to consider very aggressive and can attack anybody. Brika or Oath is mentioned in Rig Veda frequently. It was depicted as a cruel and dangerous creature. In 6.51.6, .6, the deities are being appealed to protect from heels and she -holes. Ulf was an enemy of sheep, calves, and other animals along with men. So bodies are also requested to protect from Brika. Sainacharya has not clearly mentioned here who is Bajin in this context. He has skipped it by saying it as proper names of some deities, but the term often applied to Indra, Agni, and Maru, etc. in Rig Veda. The term Shardula or Shardula is never found in Rig Veda, but frequently it occurs in later Sanghita and Brahmana texts. In Taitari Sanghita, we find a reference to the danger of waking a sleeping tiger. 
In Athar Babi Day 12.1.49, the destructive character, character and conflict nature of this animal is shown. Ye te aranya pashabu mriga bani hitaha shingha biagra purushada charanti. In this mantra, the term purushada means man eater, and the forest deity is prayed to protect man and animal from these cruel creatures. The mention of Shingha is found in Rig Veda and later Vedic text also. He wanders about and lives in the hills of Gis. So he's called Girishtha and is clearly bred while this that slays Mriga, Bhima, Upahatanuhu, into which Rudra is compared. Thus, powerful animals are depicted as dreadful and aggressive in various places of Vedic literature. In 2.37.3 of Rig Veda, forest god is invoked to make its stakeholders powerful without any violence. In this context, Sayanacharya has taken the meaning of the term Arishan as Ahimsa or non-violence. Now, mythological narratives. Vedic mythology is rich with tales of divine heroic figures interacting with animals, often portraying a struggle between order and chaos. Pani in the Rig Veda appears as a mythological figure, demons who widow the cows or water of heaven, and to whom Sarama goes on a mission from Indra. Pani is also compared with well old. The battle between Indra and the demon Britta also example, uh, it, for example, symbolizes the triumph of civilized life over wild, untamed forces. In Rig Veda, it is mentioned that Pedua, a mythical horse, was gifted by Ashwins to Pedu as a protection against snakes. Although the Sayanacharya has taken the meaning of Ahi as an enemy, yet in Atharva Veda 10.4.6.10, it is invoked as a destroyer of serpents. Mrigaya, a human foe, was defeated by Indra in Rig Veda. We found numerous references of Mrigaya. This narrative and an underscore the dual nature of wildlife as both revered and feared. Now we come to the conclusion. From the study of this above resources, it can be uh, concluded that the interaction between human and wildlife in Vedic India was characterized by a profound respect for nature intervened with practical challenges and conflict. The Vedic texts offer a holistic perspective on how early Indian society navigated this complex relationship balancing relevance with pragmatism. This dual approach fostered a worldview that recognized the interconnectedness of all forms and necessity of maintaining harmony within world of within natural world. Nowadays, anthropocentric activities have steadily eaten into our natural habitats of wild animals and increased the instances of man-animal conflict. In contemporary time, the Vedic perspective on conflict and coexistence with wildlife provide valuable insights for modern conservation efforts. Embracing the spiritual and reverence for nature alongside practical measures for sustainable living can inspire more harmonious and effective strategies for wildlife management and environmental stewardship. The evolution of man-animal conflict from ancient Vedic India to the contemporary world illustrates a dynamic interplay between human values, technological advancement, and environmental challenges. As societies continue to evolve, the finding sustainable solutions to man-animal conflict remains crucial for ensuring the well-being of both humans and wildlife. Understanding the historical concept, concept, context and adapting modern strategies can provide valuable insight into achieving a balanced and harmonious coexistence. Thank you. Uh, this is my bibliography. Thank you.